Hello, today is Monday, March 2nd, 2020. My name is Daniel Mullaney and behind the camera is Caitlin Yates. Today our, we are here to film a video source inspection of an HTC 8020 cassette and box washing system that was sent to SciTech for repair and partial refurbishment after an over temp issue happened with the air heater. Uh, the air heater's um, over temp switch did not activate the heater overheated and caused substantial damage to the heater itself, uh, the HEPA filter, the pre-filter inside the chamber, um, even into the drain area. And the system was sent in for replacement of many parts as well as installation of the parts that were able to be decontaminated. This customer is located in the Northeastern United States and their PO number is 4513874622. Um, so what I'll do first is before we get this going, I'm going to like to read off the items that we are uh, going to be addressing during this refurbishment of the system, or not full refurbishment, but partial. We will install the air heater and the blower assembly, uh, install the hub assembly and all spray arms. Those are located at the top and the bottom of the tool. Um, all of those were completely destroyed from the over temp issue. <clears throat> We also, there was so one moment here, there were two purchase orders issued for this project as the, uh, when the system arrived, um, it was unclear which parts were gonna actually be completely replaced after the decontamination process in the fab. Um, many of those parts had to eventually get tossed because they were not able to be cleaned and when the system arrived, we were able to document such products and then provide an additional quote for those direct replaced parts. So now, in addition to the air assembly that I discussed, the forced air heater and the top and bottom, we also replaced the windows, seals, and all the Delrin on the front face of this door. Uh, we also replaced many different Delrin parts inside of the chamber at the top and the bottom, or the bottom for where the uh, racks slide in and out of the tool. Um, <clears throat> We also had to replace uh, the air heater seals, filter housing seals. Uh, we had to design new drain seals for the system, replace the air knife belts. Uh, there was a def defective surfactant pump, pump as a result. Um, the fill sensor, we welded the heater chamber, uh, rebuilt the contaminated blower, uh, replaced the drain catch in the back of the system to prevent uh, debris from reaching down into the recirculating pump. Uh, we replaced all of the one inch thick PFA uh, air knife tubing. That is the tubing that provides uh, air to the actual spray arms or the, the air knives. Um, and we manufactured a new drain sump assembly. So as you can see there was uh, quite a few issues with this tool due to the extreme overheating condition. Um, but now the system functions correctly and we're going to demonstrate that via video. The racks inside of the system are Cytex here. Um, this rack is actually on a current order that I'll be shipping out within the next couple days. It was just finished. And this other rack is uh, one from sitting in our inventory uh, for future opportunity. Um, the customer did not send in their high temp, or sorry, not high temp, <clears throat> their high voltage power box to run the system. That's a 480 volt power box that we currently have here at SciTech. So we're using our own there. We're not going to be addressing that throughout the video then. As well as the electronics. The electronics were already functional when the system arrived um, and those have not been addressed by us as there was uh, no issue with actual system performance. Uh, the screen does have a couple lines across it due to its age um, and could be replaced but it is readable and it is still functional so to keep costs down we're leaving that the way it is. <clears throat> All right, so now the system is going to be ready to run. What we're going to do is, is we're going to run the, the uh, normal cycle. We're going to film the first portion of it up through until when the actual uh, air heater kicks on. At that point, we're going to pause the video because there's about a 40 minute dry time on this system. Um, and there's no need to just show the 40 minute dry time. We've already confirmed all of that has functioned properly. What we're going to do is, is we're actually going to turn on uh, the camera at the end of the dry cycle just to show you that it completed properly. We're going to open the chamber, review the internal components or the internal um, cassettes that were dr dried, uh, demonstrate those are working properly, and then we will conclude our source inspection for today. So the next move I have is to initiate the normal cycle. Okay. 
So what we see here is that the DI fill is currently on. So what we have happening in the system is that the DI water is, um, is like I said, doing the fill step. And that's when we have a reservoir in the back of the chamber that's filling up that will be recirculated through the system uh, during the wash cycle. We now have the surfactant dispense on and it's now off. So the surfactant is a really, really short uh, dispense. A little surfactant goes a long way as we know. And what the system does is it fills in a layer of water, it dispenses surfactant in for a few seconds, and then it continues the fill. And now the system will actually be washing with the surfactant. As you can see, it's a slightly violent wash, but it is uh, designed that way so it can be effective for not just um, rinsing water across the cassette and cassettes, but also having a decent amount of agitation in there to get a little extra deep clean. <clears throat> so this uh, wash cycle is going to be 45 seconds. And then we're going to drain the system and re-perform the same exact wash step two or three more times, depending on the uh, specific programming. And those second two or three will not have the surfactant pump initiated. The surfactant is only initiated in the first step. Uh, the next couple are just for cleaning that surfactant out while continually cleaning the product in the chamber, in this case, cassettes. All right, so we have a 20 second um, drain right there. So now we drain the reservoir. We're now refilling the DI fill. Um, and we'll be going through the same exact step. In addition to providing refurbishments for the HTC 8020 box washer, SciTech also has the ability to refurbish a variety of tools used in the front end wafer process uh, manufacturing site. Uh, those would include spin rinse dryers, specifically semi-tool and Vertec, which are our specialty. Um, those would also include a variety of metrology tools, such as um, profilometers, thin film measurement tools, stress tools, particle counters, and a variety of others that can be found on our website. We also provide refurbishments for um, barrel ash and etch tools, such as a Branson IPC 3000 system or a March scrubber. Um, we're able to provide both those types of systems. Um, we also do work on photoresist pumps. So that would be IDI and Cybor pumps. We can provide a limited number of spare parts as well as rebuilds for those systems. Uh, that includes millipore pumps as well. Okay. We have five seconds remaining of this rent cycle before we're going to be stepping into the drain. Okay, so now we're draining and we'll be filling it again shortly. We also work on Vapor Prime ovens. Uh, those would be YES LP3s and LP3 M5s or uh, a variety of other brands similar to the YES systems. Okay, we're doing a fill again here right now. The <clears throat> two systems that SciTech is able to fully support are semi-tool spin rinse dryers and Vertex spin rinse dryers, as well as FloorWare Integris HTC box washers. If you have any service or spare part need for those systems, please give us a call as we are able to provide many of those parts from our stock directly. And if not, we can provide them with a short lead time. Okay, there we go. Now we are moving into rinse cycle two. I do believe we have a third rinse cycle on this system, but uh, my memory might betray me, so we'll see you again shortly. While this is continuing with the rents, we can actually take a quick minute because I did not show it yet to look underneath the system where we did additional work as well. And actually what I need to do is I'm going to step over here and it's going to get a little loud but I need to turn on the blowers. All right. So. It's a little more loud now, but I had to turn them on before. So we don't have the proper full exhaust system set up here to um, 
to have the exhaust switches be met during the dry cycle. So what we do is we have additional manual exhaust tied up to the tool over here. It does meet the process specifications, but I need to turn them on prior to getting into the exhaust or to, to the dry cycle as the exhaust switch, if it's not met, will EMO the system. Uh, well, not EMO it, it'll show an alarm and the system will not proceed through the dry cycle. That is one of the, um, that is one of the features of the system that prevent it from overheating uh, like it did before. Oh, and uh, one other aspect that we uh, performed for this customer per their request is we added a redundant uh, overtemp switch to the air heater assembly in order to prevent this type of issue from happening again in the future. It should have happened in the first place, but after systems sit in a uh, manufacturing environment for many years, it can be difficult to predict which parts may have failed, specifically items that are tied into an overtemp situation. Okay, so as I said, here's rent cycle three, and that's performing right now. So now under, underneath the system, we have our internal blower right here, which will turn on during the, the dry cycles. We have the wash pump here. Both were rebuilt for this project. It's a little difficult to see from there, but in the back we have the drain assembly and the fill, the DI fill assembly. Both of those were either decontaminated or replaced in this situation. And lastly, inside here is where the main damage initiated, which was the air heater overtemping, as well as the uh, filters melting. So. It's a little bit loud. Okay, so now we're moving into the exciting dry cycle. So the system's essentially going to sit here and rotate through all of the different air knife, um, air knife assemblies one at a time to perform an even dry of the system. Some of the air knives will oscillate simultaneously as they're tied to the same initial mechanism, which would be a bimba cylinder with a chain. Um, so although they may be rotating at the same time, they're not blowing air at the same time. Only one actual knife will blow at a time, even though many may move at the same time. And so here we are, I'm just taking a look. Each air knife zone is going to be about 30 seconds. So we're currently on the second zone right now. It's being marked by the controller. And soon it will switch over to the third zone, as it just did. So now the system is, as I said, alternating through the air knives. It'll continue to dry. And then we'll be able to inspect the chamber once the system has completed such steps. Uh, now the air heater is on and the blower's been on. Everything is operating properly. We also see that the DI water, it's now at 49, but it was over 50 degrees, uh, hitting its set point during the wash cycle. And our drying temp is now up to 54 degrees Celsius, 55 degrees Celsius. And we'll continue to watch this rise until it holds temperature. Once we've demonstrated that, oh, okay, so here we go. It'll be shortly that this item holds temperature. What I should have done in the beginning was figured out what the set point was. I can actually demonstrate that at the end by just checking on the controller. Um, but shortly, as I said, this will hold temperature and then it'll maintain that temperature within a couple degrees throughout the remainder of the dry cycle um, and it'll be regulated as such. There we go. Just dropped down to 59. So the set point for this controller is at 60 degrees C. It has just hit that set point, turned off the air heater, and cooled down by a tiny bit, one degree, two degrees. It'll now initiate the air heater again, and it'll turn back up, and it will slowly oscillate back and forth for the remainder of this um, uh, process run. For a system like this, maintaining a specific temperature is not as important as other systems. We are simply generally drying the entire chamber, and so, a control system as such is works appropriately with the application. You can actually see that it has the heater is going to be instructed to be turned back on now at 55. So in the end, we're, we're, we're going to expect about a uh, oh, the on button is actually there on right there. 
So we're going to be expecting about a 6 degrees Celsius variation throughout this drive process, and that is what is expected for a system like this. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and take a break. You're not going to see much other than us coming back in a second here, and we will then be able to show you the last couple of minutes of this drive time and inspect the chamber. We'll see you soon. We're back. So now we have one minute left of dry cycle time. We are still oscillating through the air knife zones. The air heater's on and the blower's on. Really, nothing has changed since we left other than about 25 minutes of dry time has elapsed. I believe earlier I mentioned that it was a 40 minute dry time. In this circumstance, it's a 30 minute one. We run the process that's appropriate for completing the dry cycle. So that's something that the customer will calibrate on site and determine uh, with some process runs and just process development. Okay, 20 seconds left. I am peeking inside the chamber now though, and it looks like pretty much everything is dry. Okay, and I actually forgot at the end of the dry time, there's gonna be a cool down step. I can't remember exactly how long this cool down step is. It's gonna show me in a second here. Okay, two minutes. So <clears throat> the air heater is now off. The blower is still on and we have two minutes of the system just cooling down. It gets quite hot in there and it would be a safety hazard if you were just allowed to open the system right there and reach in. Even after the dry time though, you want to be a, a little careful with the system. Um, metal racks can get a little bit hot and um, the system you know, was, was warmed up to 60 degrees Celsius so uh, it's kind of hot to the touch for a human. We're down to 60 seconds. At the end of this dry time, I'm also going to turn off the blowers, uh, our external blowers, uh, in order to um, um, reduce the noise level a little bit so I can talk a little more uh, with, without as much uh, interference. <clears throat> Of our process cycle complete. I'll hit reset just to confirm it through the system. Turn off these blowers. All right. Okay, so our process cycle here is now complete. So yeah, as I mentioned, get a little warm. I'm touching this rack though. I'm not concerned about being burned. However, touching with direct skin uh, may affect some people. This cassette is perfectly dry. I'll do an inspection of these other items as well. Okay, yep, all cassettes over here are dry. Move over to the other rack. Demonstrate for the camera here. All of these cassettes look dry as well. I'm gonna go ahead and inspect the bottom here. Yep, everything's good. Okay, no residual waters left to drip down on uh, cassettes as, as they're being removed. So this is a successful run. Taking a look inside the chamber. Everything is dry. 
Uh, let's see here, other than a couple drops on the bottom base of the chamber, uh, which is expected. That was a successful process run here. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to view our video source inspection for today. Again, my name is Daniel Mullaney and I filmed this inspection with Caitlin Yates for SciTech Process Solutions. If you'd like to learn more about our company or see more of our products, they are available online at www.scitechprocess.com, spelt S-I-T-E-K, uh, or you can give us a call at 916-797-9000 and to reach me directly, dial extension 2201. Thank you for your time and have a great day.